Hey everyone, hope you are well. How's it going? Welcome to a wonderful Friday. I don't know what's gone wrong, but the market's gone mental. So if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe, hit the bell button, leave a like and comment. It's Friday, it's live. And yeah, I'll be back on Sunday and we'll see what's happened because my thought process was, well, let's do a video on the market. And I thought, well, this could be fun. And then I thought, well, actually, let's talk about the methodology on how it works in terms of accumulation in crypto, dominance chart, understand when and when not to invest, understand when and not to buy the pumps, which we're seeing all the time. A lot of people want to buy the pumps. Dogecoin. Hmm. And obviously Bitcoin's pumping right now. Obviously, everything's just going turbo right now. And it's a lot of interest. So... If you're new to the stream, hello, welcome, hi, I hope you're doing well. I might get a new load of people due to everything. I hope everyone's having a jolly day as well because it's all fun and games until things go wrong. We'll start first with talking about Dominus chat in a bit before we jump on. We'll wait for more and more people to jump in. Obviously, share, say hello, obviously as well. Slap a like on this video. We've only got 25 likes, we want more than that, obviously because we want more and more people to see this, share this as America wakes up. So I'll waffle for a bit and then we'll talk a little bit about the methodology in terms of accumulation of good altcoins, solid altcoins using simple methodology. And we'll talk about what's happened with Dogecoin, why it's all going shit and wrong and for people, people dying and crying and whatever. But yeah, it's just absolutely savage at the moment. So it's fine, it's fine. Should be used to this by now is crypto at the end of the day. If you're not yet following me on Twitter, by the way, just to give you a pointer, follow me. You know, I do tweet an awful lot. There's also a giveaway here if you're so keen to do that. But we'll talk briefly because I think this is important. What we're seeing here is some savage pumps in some savage coins. Voyager is the one that I hold. I'm very, very happy that's popped. I know a lot of people hold it as well who've been on my channel. Dogecoin. As you know, yeah, crazy moves. The, the, the volume on it, look at the volume. It's just like, what the hell? You know, it's like, and if you're unaware, this was all due to Reddit and Wall Street and the Satoshi bets or whatever it's called. They've, they've made a group for that. Then you've got the likes of other people going, talking about Dogecoin, celebrities, famous people. We're all doing this little movement where we're putting a Bitcoin in our Twitter tag. And yeah, life is fun, but it's all fun and games until that rug is pulled, essentially. And we talk about these rug pulls all the time, whether they're mythical or not, whether it's DeFi or not, whether it's a meme coin or not. Sometimes we buy the wrong thing at the wrong time and we get burnt. And I firmly believe that in the next give or take three months, that this might bite me on the ass. Dogecoin will probably settle back down again and chill out and relax and it's all just one of those things because we know history history tells us very very simply that this has done so much pumping and dumping in the past dogecoin is always that coin it's just it happens so if you're not careful in the market i.e you know if you want to if you want to crack on crack on right but what i'm saying here is don't put money you can afford to lose in something like dogecoin because it may not work out and if it doesn't work out and you're stuck there holding the bag it's pretty awful because these high supply coins by the way yield a lot of losses because they stay in the dumps quite a lot which is never good but yeah if you've not yet done so slap a like on the video so it just gets a bit more reach and then i'll reveal some secret sauce because i think a lot of people are looking forward to learning a bit more about this i've seen a few of the videos not all of them but this will hopefully put it all together in a live situation so you can ask questions as well. But in terms of USD prices, as you can see here, a bit of banter as well, obviously. You know, it's like the Lambo Day, like Peter Day, stuff like that. They'll do random stuff. Um, it looks great in USD prices. We're well over a trillion dollars now, well, <laughs> nearly 1.1 trillion, which is amazing. But for me, fundamentals of why this market has gone turbo is because of this, right? When you think about it, we laugh, we joke, we talk about all these little words, these frames that we talk about and little bits and bobs. And you can see there's a full description of it here. This is manipulation in a way that it's how things move. 
markets will always have buyers or always have volume, buying pressure, selling pressure, all kinds of stuff. But what happens here is it's just a massive movement. It's a massive drum movement. It's like it's like when something happens when you know something big's developed and released. So say for example, when Engine Coin had the announcement that they were going into the Samsung phones on release back in was that 2018 time? It was a long time ago now, or whatever it was. The market went turbo for it, went bang, everyone wanted to buy it. This is the same sort of situation here where we've got a lot of people going, there's a coin here, we're going to pump it to $1, let's send it. That's all they've done, right? So it's created that volume, that FOMO. And this is where I go on about as well, talking about other influencers, and I say this very, very openly. I really do believe that certain YouTubers and certain Twitter handles influence the market. Elon Musk as a Twitter handle, just to give you a pointer there. Now, when you start thinking, when they're talking about it, it's going to create an algorithm change in the market. More buyers are going to come in. It's going to squeeze the short. It's going to liquidate people, creating a stop loss jump, a bit of slippage, essentially, to go higher. And then you get all the other distribution elements, such as coin market cap, top growing coin. You'll get your whale alerts, unusual buying activity. You'll get block folio. This has moved X amount. It creates on that greed factor of everyone. And what's happened is it's mass manipulation in a way to get people to buy because things are going up. We all know that people like to buy green. You shouldn't. It happens. It's one of those things. And this is why I'm going to hopefully teach you guys something, in my opinion, that I don't see much in the market because I don't think people fully believe or get it. But what I do want to go over briefly and let me just have a little think here. I think it's on this one here. Secrets of Crypto. If you've never seen this graphic before, great. It's one of the best graphics for simplistic ideology of how things in the market move. Phase one of this entire element is when the Bitcoin dominance is high. When Bitcoin is rallying like hell, like what happened essentially a few weeks back when we went from 10K, well, I say a few weeks, it was November now, I've slept a bit since then. November to now, where we went from 10K to 40K, right? Monster move. Dominance went up to 74%. Everything was getting thrashed by Bitcoin. Therefore, the next step of this is you start buying and doing your research into altcoins. You then buy the top coins. For example, with me, I bought Polkadot. Obviously, I bought Zilliqa, which I've been in for a while. I bought other coins like Cardano, VeChain. You know the ones, right? Top coins with decent amount of, let's just say, fundamentals, right? So one rule you need to always do, do your own research and find coins that are decent. I know people are frustrated because Dogecoin, which is the butt of every joke, it's just a normal internet currency, is pumping right now. But the time will come for the good coins to, because there's always a flow. When Ethereum then goes for a run, you see in Ethereum, I've talked about Ethereum recently, that grey box on my chart, which I'll show you in a second if you remind me, it's literally like the moon zone for me. Once we break out from that August 2018 levels in the BTC pairing, it will rally hard. It will rally much harder than you think as well. And you can see here, money is then starting to trickle into those large cap coins, Polkadot, VeChain, Cardano, Chainlink, da, 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 boom. And then you get the larger cap coins where the mid caps and stuff like that, where they're up a certain amount, they're up maybe 500 million in market cap going towards that billion. And then once it got to the billion, it gets interesting. And then that money flow goes. And then we have this huge surge in FOMO. It's called all season. We're already seeing a few phases, in my opinion, where we've seen the likes of Cardano pump, Chainlink pump, you know, even you could even argue the likes of Polkadot recently has been pumping pretty significantly. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things. But then you see the bottom phase. Large caps have gone fully vertical. Tops are blowing off. Things are starting to happen now. When we start looking at the CoinGecko chat, we're starting to see these mid-cap coins just going bang. And these are big moves. If you look at the last, well, look at even there. 50% in a week, up, 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 up. And some of them are even more. It's going to get worse. And it's going to get more interesting as money flows into it. So... Let me show you how I do it, right? So I hope everyone's here. As I say, slap the like button. What I do here, I look predominantly at this dominance chart. I want to know what the index is telling me 
overall. If you look at the weekly time frames and you start seeing when things are high and it looks over overbought essentially, exhausted, you should be looking at these levels because what you're going to see here is if you've got Bitcoin and in my opinion, this is not the sort of thing that everyone follows, but you should always be buying your cryptocurrency in the BTC pair. With that, you are going to find that at these peaks, these big old fuck off peaks where the fiat prices of all your altcoins are up in the air, Bitcoin looks bullish as hell, your BTC pairings will be on the floor. And let me just give you a few examples here. So if we look actually at the start of this year, for example, when we start looking, obviously, where things have been, if you start looking, and let's just look at Ethereum first, because it's more obvious. The start of this year with Ethereum, weekly time frame, we're obviously on the floor here, as you can see, absolute floor levels. Now, but we have been a lot lower, obviously, but it's low. When you think this was the previous run, so this was when last alt season ended, right? When the dominance was pretty low and then took off again. When Bitcoin went up to 10K, from 10K to 40K, we had this massive overriding smash where altcoins just lost their value. This is when you don't want to be in altcoins, when dominance is going to the moon. You want to be looking at buying altcoins when that dominance starts to tail off a bit and looks high. Yes, you may occur some losses because you're a bit early, but at the same time, good fundamentals, solid analysis on those fundamentals and knowing when the dominance is high will help you because overall in time, you will start to get some great moves. And what I'm seeing here, this gray box, by the way, just to put it out there, this is massive. If we're pulling back now and going to a demand zone and we keep the structure, we're going to rock it. And I mean that. And I've, I've done multiple videos on this. I think people are kind of expecting it to happen instantly, but it'll take a few weeks because it is a weekly time frame. So when you go back to this ideology of how to make more crypto, it's essentially just using this chart in a simple way. You know that you should be holding altcoins and looking to buy altcoins when this is high. When this is low, you want to be taking profit. If you are buying altcoins because, you know, you FOMO'd in because Chainlink's $20, like, yeah, and then you think, oh, fuck, you know, you will lose because what happened here with Chainlink was a really, really good one. I showed this on my channel recently. It was $20 in USD, and it was all-time high levels in Satoshi values. Bitcoin took off, and it lost 60% of its value in Satoshis, and the, obvious, the USD price wasn't too bad in realistic terms. There was a point recently where Chainlink was $22. It was over its USD pricing, but it was down 50% in BTC value. So you can see there already, it's going to be a massive, massive shock to the system when people get used to this idea. When you start looking at the BTC parent when this is high, you're going to see some mega value and bargain. So just for that example as well, Cardano, I've showed this before. Last alt season, where we are right now, in my opinion, I think this is the next demand zone. We're going to take off from here. Bit of a simple analysis. But overall, as a long-term investor, if you are selling when the dominance goes low and starts turning around and Bitcoin goes on a run, you're going to see the opportunity again to use that Bitcoin as a simple ratio methodology of putting a little bit of those BTC profits, because they'll be worth more as well. Don't, don't forget that into these low level BTC pairings. And when you start looking at the, the facts here, yeah, they don't move as much as USD pairs, but you can get so much more coin, so much more, because that BTC will always remain Bitcoin as you hold. If you're in altcoins, that Satoshi value will always fluctuate. It goes mental. So today, when I look at my portfolio, just to give you a pointer, let me just have a little look at this because I've not looked for a while. I might be a bit scared. So. When I look at my BTC value today, because the Bitcoin dominance is jolted so much today, it looks pretty bad. When you think to yourself, and people are panicking, even in my group at the minute, people are panicking a little bit. But when I look at it, I'm up 9% today in USD prices. I'm not really interested about that. I want to grow my Satoshis. I'm down 8% in my Satoshis today. However, what I know is that I feel that personally, this will probably tail off again. It's just one of those things. We're in a downtrend. And we've got to trust the trend. We've got to trust that analysis. Yes, yeah, 62% is a strong level. But what could happen here is we could easily find it. We can reject here. Or we can reject a little bit higher previous levels where we start seeing sentiment and it all balances with Bitcoin. If you start analysis, uh, doing analysis on Bitcoin, we're at key levels here. We're still, in my opinion, not financial advice, 
forming a downtrend because this is still formed a series of you know you can see it's lower highs simple and then we've got a series of lower lows so even this body area it's closed lower than this so we still could roll over if this does roll over by the way just to point this out in an obvious term as well before i start answering questions if this does turn around and we go down to the 618 levels here, we could go down to 20K, which I mentioned before. We could even go down to 25K, which is actually quite a decent area to be, in all fairness, for a decent retracement. That's about 50% of the move retraced. It's not uncommon. It does happen. But if that does happen, the dominance will then drop as well because the FOMO will lead into the spillovers from the profit into all coins. But what I think we're seeing right now with this pump is Dogecoin profits going directly into bitcoin people are taking profits it's pumped the market there's been so much money going in so this alone could be interesting but when you look overall at the rsi it's it's formed a bit of a double bottom it's going to get a reaction anyway it's formed the double bottom here it's going to get a lot of interest and for me overall i'm not worried because i think that in the methodology of using the dominance chart it's still high 65 and above is still high you can still get some really good bargains in coins i've mentioned before you know rsr it's still below this key level which has failed to break since october break above that boom off it goes they're still undervalued if you've got btc spare and you're buying and holding and keeping it simple and putting a percentage of your btc worth into these low valued btc pairings on altcoins and not worrying about the usd you'll make money and that is how you make and grow your crypto as this thumbnail suggests how to get rich by growing your crypto what would you rather have 100,000 USD or five Bitcoin? Well, I'd rather have five Bitcoin and allow that to fluctuate in value up and down, up and down, regardless if I have five BTC and it goes down to like 5K per Bitcoin. I'd rather have that than 100K in my bank because I know that Bitcoin will be worth more in the future. And it's also against all that bullshit bollocks with corporations and banks, in my opinion. So when we start looking at where this could go in terms of RSR, you know, Look at the previous level here. We've got another dip here. Obviously, that's an old level. You know, what would you rather have? A percentage of your Bitcoin going into RSR to work and grow your Bitcoin for a potential move to the upside in an alt season, potentially do a 100% gain, maybe. Who knows? Maybe even less. Let's just say 100%, give or take, up to this previous level of, of resistance, essentially. One Bitcoin will become two. It's simple. You just comp compound it up. Whereas what would, could happen in the, in the realistic terms of the market your BTC might shrink in value because, you know, it's slowed down, it's chilled out. 20K Bitcoin would half the USD price, which everyone shits themselves at. But actually, realistically, you've probably doubled your BTC value by these charts just going the other way. It's like Forex, like the dollar cost, uh, the, the dollar index, the DXY. It works in a certain way. It's, it's really interesting. But you've got to, honestly, you've got to have more Bitcoin. Do not be sitting relying on just USD. The problem is, and I've said this before, the likes of these companies here, the likes of Coin, Coin Market Cap, and all the companies, they're all led with USD. When I joined the market, there was no such thing as USD. It was literally like fucking Bitcoin or Ethereum. That was it. That's all you got. Scary. But you need to be aware of all this, this information. But I hope that does explain it because if you just stick to simple ideology rules of Bitcoin's high in dominance and it's high in usd realistically there's two things you should only do take money out and enjoy your life whether you want to pay off your debts or whatever crack on or put a percentage of that btc into some altcoins at low value prices and then obviously as dominance drops those will go up take profit rinse repeat rinse repeat that is a simple ideology of it works i've done it for years great hi everyone i'll talk to you now <laughs> So yeah, smash up the likes. Obviously, 500 people in here. Smash the likes up. Come on, man. But yeah, let me know what you think about the whole Dogecoin because we'll have a talk about it because I did a video on it yesterday. It's absolutely savage of what's happening, right? Um, A lot of people have been doing bets with me or trying to do bets regarding it. will it go to a dollar. And yeah, well, pfft, you know, the biggest problem with the reason why I think it won't is because of this. The supply is monstrous. Even as of today, there's been an extra billion made, give or take. And, you know, it births coins. It births them. Literally, boom. You know, it's like, 
it's like a chav on a council estate, literally in the UK. Like that is what it's like. This will just continuously grow in supply. I don't think people get it yet, but eventually it'll stop in some ways the, the growth of it because there'll be too many coins. You've got to be careful, right? It doesn't work like the stock market. It doesn't work as you think it does because you're going to be constantly diluting the supply. For this to get to a dollar, we're looking at basically Ethereum market cap. I find that hard to believe. Yes, obviously it's not impossible, but I find it hard to believe that a coin of this stature that is literally a fork of Bitcoin or a Litecoin or whatever it is, I can't even remember now off the top of my head. Let me have a little look. Is it a fork of Bitcoin? Is it a fork of... No, it's a fork of Litecoin. Close enough. I mean, Litecoin is literally a fork of Bitcoin at the end of the day. But when you look at this and you think, well, what's it made out of? What does it do? Well, it's just an internet currency. It's a first generation internet currency based off the Litecoin fork. Not mind-blowing not mind-blowing at all and yeah it can be quite fun yes it could bring my mainstream eyeballs to us but i'd much rather than pump something better anyone would i think if if someone said pump rsr i'd be happy with that if someone said you know pump something with a bit of value they'd be much happier let's be honest you know i'd you know nothing to say against anyone who's holding dogecoin i mean I'm technically a holder of Dogecoin when I look at my Binance portfolio when people have been joining through my referral link. It's just one of those things. But for me, when we look at the market cap, it's six billion, right? For this to get to a dollar, it's got to go up a chunk and a big chunk and a lot of chunks and sustain it for a long period of time and not wreck people in the process because people will take profits. You've got to think here, in a matter of what, how many days has this been now? Let me just have a little look. If I go to the Dogecoin chart, and we think volume and how much money people have made, there's always going to be a winner, there's always going to be a loser. If we're looking at this, right, look at the extortion already on this candle wick. We've already been up to $8.7, or eight, well, 8 .7 cents essentially. $8.7, what are you on about, dickhead? Anyways, when you look at these candle wicks here and you think to yourself, well, someone's already made a 12x gain essentially, right, give or take. You know, people are going to be taking money off the table. And we're not talking in a week here, we're talking in two days you know, two days, essentially, of candle wickage here. Like, people would have been selling up and around these regions. That's why this wick has just died. But America's waking up. As I'm speaking right now, America will be literally putting their slippers on, putting their pants on, eating the, t eating the teeth, brushing their teeth, eating their breakfast, so to speak. And they will be buying this up again. And they'll probably buy via Voyager because I think they've realised that Voyager is good, as people keep saying in the chat here. Voyager is going to be one of the vehicles to help people get on because Robinhood suspended it. Coinbase is a piece of shit and it always crashes. Binance is also a piece of shit and it always crashes too. But again, as people allude to, Voyager probably can't handle, handle the demand, which kind of worries me that we're at a point in mainstream adoption. Even Voyager right now is pumping like shit right now. It's crazy. Let me look at the state of it. Pfft. Boom. You know, absolutely savage. I'll probably look at selling this soon because it's just ridiculous. If it keeps going and keeps going, I'll probably bin it. But at the same time, I bought this at like 10 cents, you know, it's currently $2. Crazy. And I can't even remember how many Satoshis I bought it for. It wasn't, it wasn't many. It was like 600. <laughs> Dear me. But yeah, that's just crazy. But look at the exhaustion on this wick. It went to ridiculous. 1,500. No, 15,000, sorry. 15,000. Dear me, man. But yeah, Voyager as a person who has never used it before, I understand the, the need for it. I understand the fact that people need to buy crypto. People can't always go and buy it on Coinbase because of countries, states and shit. Binance is restricted in America. This is great for Americans to get involved. And we as Europeans can't use it. It's a pain in the ass. So, hi, everyone. What should I talk about? We've got loads of questions. I have 0 0.7 BTC in total. Um, want to grow my portfolio to a whole BT. If you were to grow that, I would put a percentage of your Bitcoin into some solid altcoins at the lows, you know, into the BTC pairing, buying Bitcoin and selling Bitcoin, then grow the Satoshi levels of it. So if you find a couple that go up 20, 30%, it means a lot more because when you've got just one Bitcoin, and you're putting 20% on, it's 0 0.2. You know, the round numbers are really, really ridiculous in, in reality. And you make more. It doesn't look like you're making more, but you are essentially. Even if Bitcoin's going down, 
Bitcoin's king at the end of the day. For me, Bitcoin's king. Obviously, people's agenda is a bit different there. But as as a fun thing, it's easy when you keep round numbers, when you keep ratios, when you start thinking, well, I've got 20% I can risk here. Put it in a few altcoins. Do, 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 do. Happy days, right? Makes life so much easier. Uh, what else we got? Where to do questions? Which platform as a noob do you recommend now? I still always recommend Binance as an investor. Um, spot trading. I think it's they've got the most variation. Yes, it's a bit problematic with the, the fees and ultimately the issues that they have with the downside of, you know, it going down essentially. But I think Binance overall is like for for for, for variety of everything, it's actually all right. But you know, there's all kinds out there now. You can use Coinbase, but people have problems with that at the minute because the the onboarding process takes a while. You've obviously got other things in America that work and they don't work over here. You've got things that work here then don't work over there. So it depends on what country you're in. But for me, I, I keep it very, very simple. Can you declare my love for cake token? I love cake, but I've never heard of the token. I've not looked at it. So I don't know. Do, do, do. Um... So when you're talking about how to read any coin with the BTC pairing, so what you have on any exchange, you have, so if I put in, say, Cardano, right, you have it in dollar, you have it in Bitcoin, you have it in Ethereum in some places, and you also have it in other elements, such as futures contracts, whatever. You want to look at the BTC pairing. It doesn't matter what exchange you use. Obviously, use the exchange that you've got. The better off using the exchange that you're using, providing it's got liquidity. And essentially, what you got here is, if you're looking at this here, this is just what the value of Cardano is in Satoshis. So every single Cardano is worth 904 Satoshis, right? If this was, you know, in any market, that is how the dollar ratio works, right? So you have Bitcoin worth currently right now at 38,000. If you have that number, how many Satoshis are divided by, it will give you the price in dollars of what Cardano is. So when you start seeing these pump like crazy, these pairs and Bitcoin stay stable, the USD prices will go up. However, when you sometimes see a dump in the market and Bitcoin just dies and you see USD prices just go red and horrible, disgusting, it's ugly to look at, you will often say that these will hold quite steady most of the time if the total two chart is still going up, which it is, right? If this is going down and this is in a bear market, which is essentially how you can manage a bear market or a bull market in this place. So what this means is, Money's going in. This is a total two. So this is everything excluding Bitcoin, all the other altcoins. Is it going up? Yeah, happy days. If this is going down, chances are it's going to wreck the whole market completely. So what we found over the last few weeks and a few months essentially is any BTC pairing when Bitcoin dumps, it's actually been holding all right. And this is essentially what you need to be trading. You need to be buying these low and selling them high to grow your Satoshis. And it doesn't matter what your USD price is worth because ultimately, if the dominance is low in Bitcoin, then it turns around and goes high and rampant for a bit and goes on a run. You're going to be making value appreciation of the Satoshi that you've made here. And let's be honest, as I said before, what do you rather have? Would you rather have $50,000 in Tether or would you rather have one BTC? I'd rather have one BTC personally because for me, the profit is in the long-term gain. Whereas with the 50000 Tether, if Bitcoin starts doing stupid things and going crazy, it's going to be dripping away. Even though it's in Tether, it's a stable currency, it will fluctuate with what the Bitcoin price is doing as well. You always want to keep them Satoshis. It makes so much more sense. It makes so much more sense. What other questions have we got? Um, on the coin market, I've compared USD to BTC on Ether for our old time. Your thoughts? Um, it depends if this works, because I've, I've recently noticed that when you actually do this and you move it, it doesn't actually do it as it should. It doesn't really work that well. It still gives you the wrong metrics in some cases. It's not the same as CoinGecko. But in terms of that question alone, um, it depends on how you want to look at it, because this is what people get confused with. When I start looking at this, so this is just a BTC pair, and can I turn these on? Bear with me. Can I not do all of them? Nope. It's a dick. Why are you being a dickhead? Bear with me. 
Let me just put this back to where it was. Coin market cap has changed so many things recently. It's ridiculous. Ah, there we go. So what you're seeing here, right? And I think this is what you mean. When you start looking at how the dominance chart works and stuff like that, you can see here how the BCC pairing was going quite high due to the fact of the previous alt season. When Bitcoin was rampant, this was obviously coming down. But obviously, you can see the crossover here in the USD coloration where USD prices look good because Bitcoin's high. But ultimately, you actually are losing Satoshis, even though, you know, down here it was like $391 and up here it was 600 for example you're actually down massively in satoshis so 25,000 satoshis whereas up here it's actually 40,000 so it makes a big difference in your market and I think that's what I get with your question but this is a correlation that you don't want you don't want to be buying and aping into it when it's up here and thinking you're making money in USD whereas actually you're just losing a load of satoshis which you don't want that's the worst thing in the world. Guys, by the way, slap the like button. Just saying. Fun. What template have you used for this? I don't understand what you mean. In terms of fast compounding of profits, you need to be trading. This, this can, by the way, any market, by the way, just to point this out, the problem is with this, it grows fast. And I don't think people realize how quickly this market does grow versus other markets. It's it's absolutely mental. It really is. And when we think traditional markets and why people want to pump coins and why people want to pump stocks, they want growth. And the volatility, which is what's been stopped in the likes of Robinhood and other, other websites essentially for stockbrokers. When people realize the fact that what can happen in crypto for them and not get stopped out and not get banned from making sell orders, it's going to get very, very interesting. But even if you're compounding, say, in an alt season, you may make 200, 300% growth of your portfolio and then relax. And I mean growth of portfolio in terms of BTC value. But the thing that's different is you could then multiply that value appreciation of that Bitcoin again when you're cool enough, when you're in and chilling in the world of Bitcoin. So it does compound quickly because you're gonna compound A, the amount of value you got in your in your portfolio because you got so much Bitcoin, but B, when you go to then buy altcoins again when they're low, you're gonna have more more bang for your buck every single time. And then it compounds and it does. I mean, what I started on in you know 2016, 2017 into altcoins especially, and what I've got now is chalk and cheese through accumulation, through growing Bitcoin, through buying all coins low, from doing certain things and just sticking with the course and sticking with it. And that's the thing. And people jump off very, very quickly and they're like, oh, it's horrible. But it's just one of those things. But my overall portfolio percentage of my, I have no idea because you start off, right? You start off with an element of like, I know how much it is. I've like, I think it was 60% and then I moved a little bit over. But because so many coins have pumped in the last three months, essentially, so the likes of Polkadot pumped quite, it's done a few X's. Voyager's done a shit ton of X's. Zillica's done well. Um, Utrust has done well since buying it. So every single time they're doing well, it's bringing down my overall hold of Bitcoin, but it means I'm quite heavy in, 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 in old coins at the moment. When I then sell into Bitcoin, I'll obviously flush out quite a lot of it. A lot of profits will be taken. And we're still in the process, in my opinion, I, I think we're still in the process essentially of the BTC dominance going down. I think we're going to reject in and around maybe ideally I would love a 65% rejection, but I think 68% as well is totally possible and continue the downtrend going down, which will then create another spillover, create another rampant run. But it all depends. But for me, I look at this and I think it's it's an overall bull cycle. But Bitcoin will cool off and the altcoins will have their day for whether that's two or three months, who knows? But it will go down eventually and it will then reverse on us. And then that is when you need to be in the Bitcoin and just chill out for a bit. Do your research again, see what you want to buy, wait for them to hit certain levels, dollar cost average, and just keep it simple. Keep it very, very simple. You don't have to go too mental with it. But, you know, too many people look at too many things. It's, it's a problem. Um, for RSR, for an example, is it better to buy BTC at 37,000 or 37.9? and trade into RSL or buy Tether. Personally, it doesn't matter what way you do it. You, the only problem is you're going to you're going to lose fees on selling beat or buying BTC, sorry, and then selling into Tether. So 
On Binance, the good thing is you can buy in USD and you can sell into BTC. It doesn't matter if you use Binance, obviously. So just, it's one of those things. Um, what else have we got? Remove staking positions. I owe, I've removed quite a lot of my staking positions. Um, I still hold a little bit for staking because it's nice passive income, but I also, I value value appreciation more in crypto. It's not like dividend stocks. It's not like interest on bonds are out. This is like, if you've got 50% or 100%, you're never going to make that in a year in staking. You just take the money. <laughs> you just take it. You just take that value appreciation. You go, fuck it, I'll have it, bye. And then if it drops down in price, you then buy more. And then you have more tokens and you can stake that and make even more money. And then if it happens again, repeat the process, right? That's the easiest way for me to do it. It, it makes so much more sense. Where do you get the light, uh, light coin? The LC mugs. Very, very soon. Maybe. I could do with a mug myself. I'm running out myself. I keep dropping mine. Best wallet for storage. Uh, Ledger. Even if they do give away addresses and probably come and do a little bit of servicing on you. I'm joking. But yeah, Ledger for me. By far the best. Um, cold storage. Uh, hot wallet, sorry. Um, Binance? Maybe? I don't know. It depends on what you want to work on. Entirely up to you. Um, you think BTC price will go up again after a, a dominance drop? Yeah, it always does. It only means that altcoins are rampant and it only means that you know they're more dominant over Bitcoin, essentially. Keeps it very, very simple. Yeah, Binance is the best platform for the UK. Anyone short in Dogecoin? No. No. <laughs> WST pumping Tron X. Please don't. Please don't pump Tron. It is a piece of turd. Oh man. Don't anyone agree with me on that statement? That thing's Tron's a piece of turd. Oh, I think they are, you know. Oh no. Oh no. Please don't. <laughs> oh. Nope. The thing is, we're going to create so much interest in the market through all of this and people will get hurt. I mean, at the end of the day, Tron has been 25 cents, give or take nearly 20. How many cents has it been? What's it all time high? I'm pretty sure this is like 20 odd cents, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it was. 30 cents this was all time high. Dear me. People will be bag holding from there still. Where do you think Voyager can go? I mean, the thing is, like, I want to sell it, but I don't. I'm, like, scared. It's one of those things where the way I look at Voyager, right, just to give you a pointer on this, I'm seeing, well, we're all seeing it. More and more people come into the market. More and more people want to buy coins. More and more people want to stake coins and earn interest. Voyager's new in that realm. It's an oldish token, realistically, taken over the technology by a big corporation who are a public company who hold a lot of bitcoin as well and they're just getting their feet under the table they're coming in at the right time because coinbase is having problems robin hood's having problems everyone's having problems and this is like hi users we're okay and then bang <laughs> and we've already seen the reaction to the stake and interest going live what we're seeing now is people going onto the platform to buy dogecoin because they've just listed it so this could go much higher the supply by the way is fully out there's no one holding by the team there's only 222 million of them. You can earn rewards on this. And we know what happens with these models. When there's interest, when there's interest in the market for, for interest as well, for earning a, on your token holds, for buying coins, for volume utility, they go up in value. They go up in value so much. And when they go up in value, well, guess what? They're going to keep going up in value because of token utility. And people then talk. And then people then recommend their friends because they like it. So yeah, that gets fun. So I think it'll do well. Um, I, but as I say, I've been in below 10 cents. You know, I've been in for ages and I've just been chilling on it because I've been waiting for the day that it went live and thought, fuck it, let's go. And here we are. Boom. Happy days. Do you think Holochain or Electronium fundamentals are looking better? No. 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 In terms of Electronium could because it's a payment solution and... They seem to pump the quickest or the easiest because of what it is. Doge is an example, but for me, nah. For me, the fundamentals in that don't make sense. Like, why Why would you only concentrate on one element, whereas they could do so much more, and they could have done so much more, but they haven't. Which is kind of a poor thing, in my opinion. Overall, anyways. 
Um, will Ethereum drop if Bitcoin drops? It depends what you're looking at. For me, I think this is ready for a push, i.e. The, 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 the Bitcoin pair. When I talk about this and I talk about like where we are right now, we're retracing. We've actually retraced 38% of this move from this massive big push to the upside for this resistance level from years ago, from August. If I go in, there we go. Weekly time frame. This is an August level, right? This is monster. We're retracing. I think we're going to pull up for some liquidity. We'll probably maybe grab some. If BTC cools down and rejects off this level, this will go bang. Yes, maybe the USD prices will drop a little bit, but Bitcoin's currently 11% up right now. If that takes a cool off over the weekend and just jolts a little bit down and goes back down to 35k, for example, this may well rock it. And that could be the fun part. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Overall. Anything can happen in this market, by the way. Just so you know, I think you've already realized that. If you knew. Um, Voyager, man. Come on. What should I do? I don't know what to do with it. I really don't know what to do with it. I might just hold on to it. Chill out. Uh, Zilliqa, I only stake about 20% and the rest of it I will probably, depending on what happens, I'll probably sell quite a bit of it and then probably look to rebuy more if the staking rewards are still good. But again, it depends on fundamentals as well. If Zilliqa continues to grow and grow and grow, I will hold the load and then I will sell my profit essentially and I may well buy back with that profit if the market settles down or whatever, What depending on what happens with the bull run essentially. Um, but Ultimately, if I feel that I don't need to buy anymore and I'm happy with it and I'll just hold a bag, a core bag essentially, I'll just leave it and then I'll be happy with it to just chill where it is and hold it for the long term. But it depends. If fundamentals totally change, I'll probably bin it completely, but I don't see that happening. But it all depends on that profit bag. Will I reinvest to get more or will I just use that elsewhere or enjoy my life essentially? You know, it's one of those things. Um, I do feel that altcoins are ready for a potential breakout. It depends on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin does slow down, as I've alluded to, and we get this turn around, essentially, where this can turn and then retest that support level, altcoins could fly. And that obviously means bullish sentiment. New people coming into the market. Excited newbies coming into the market who want to buy Dogecoin because they believe it's going to go to $10, to $20, to $30. No joke. People say that on my YouTube why only 20%? Um, because I've got enough GZL, simple as that. I, I was staking from day one. So I was staking when it was 40% for like a couple of weeks. It was great. It was lovely. So as it's deteriorated, I've been taking my bag out. I've got quite a lot of GZL to sit on anyway, so I'm not really that worried. Um, at the end of the day, once the use case is out, it might do all right. It's free money at the end of the day. But value appreciation is king. If Zillica did a 3x from now, or a 4x or a 5x, and I'm stuck for 14 days, it's the worst feeling in the world. There's no point. So I'd rather take that money or take that gamble where I'm not getting as much GZIL, but I'll get the loot, essentially, the reward for holding a coin from low. Any hidden gems you are keeping your eye on? Yep. Do you want to know what it is? It starts with P. I've said it a few times. Oh, if you could pick three coins, what would it be? I'm not going to answer that. If you watch my YouTube, you'll probably see them. Also, guys, like the video. It helps. I use stake.zillica, which is Zillion, their main platform to stake. Um, essentially, it's one of the easiest platforms you can use. It's really, really simple. It's really, really good. But for me, fundamental-wise... Zillica's key, it's king, I love it. But at the same time, I think it will do much better in value appreciation in the, in the, in the short term versus long term staking. For me, that's my opinion. Polka dot. I've never heard of polka dot. Anyone heard of it? I'm only joking. I love polka dot. Has anyone ever seen um, a YouTube video where it's on the polka dot channel where it's Gavin Wood explaining how it works? It's fucking fascinating. You should definitely watch it. Check it out. Portfolio tracker. What do I use? I use Delta, and people have guessed the Pluton token as the hidden gem, which I feel it is. But the problem is with it, like anything, people don't want to spend their crypto right now. But I do feel that it will do well. And you can see it here on the chart. It's doing all right today. Oh, yeah, well, I don't have much data on it, but pumping a little bit. It's been a bit, it's been lower. But one thing that I've said with this a few times, 
<laughs> it's been a lot higher. Look how high this has been, boys and girls, and look how low it is in the BTC charts. If this gets sent, au revoir. It's a lot of Bitcoin being made, essentially. It'd be lovely. But yeah, I use it. I use a card. I like it a lot. Um, the only reason why I hold it is because I use a card and get rewards on it. But I do like it. Do -do -do. <laughs> they don't want to do research. They just want the doge. Yep. A lot of people will. You'll always find that. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what comment section you're in. You always find people that will not do any research. And I hope people do do research or at least understand the basics of what they're buying. Even if that means, right? And I mean this. Going onto Coin Market Cap, finding a coin like like Neo, and taking the time to just read this website. You don't have to go onto their website if you understand what it is, the main focus, the team, and then going all the way down, and then actually not so much going down, just going to the ratings page, right? And even if that means you read in the ratings page and going through all the reports, because these analysts report on majority of these, there's not on Neo, <laughs> bummer. But you know, on certain things you can get. You know, reports. Let's look at Cardano, for example. You know, if you are bored and you want to do a deep dive and go into, into the block, for example, which you can, you know, all this information, by the way, it's it's free. You know, this is free information. You can have a deep dive of what it is, and then you can start finding out and start reading and looking at written re reports as well. And then things get very, very interesting over time. And you start learning what they are, and, you know, as simple as it is, but ultimately you need to go on to like the white paper. You can see it all here, you know, cards on our website. You can get the picture. It's for some people it's boring. For for me, I kind of like it. It's kind of cool, kind of fun. API three thoughts. I like it. I'm not going to buy it yet though. Um, I'm waiting for the end of alt season and potential low prices for the future because I do think, I do think, this is on the right path for dominance of the oracle sector in my opinion um when you look at how this is going to work versus the others how it kind of you know is i think this is quite a good one for the long term i'm not going to buy into it yet i've not done enough research to understand it but i understand where it's going and i think this is a one for me to keep an eye on for the next alt season so you may well see me feature this more in the future but enough of that um what other thoughts have you got if tokens are held on Uniswap, do you take profits? I don't use Uniswap. I think it's a pile of poo. It's very expensive to use Uniswap. And the thing is, right, with Uniswap, because of, its, because of what it is, right, a lot of exchanges are listing Uniswap coins anyways. Like, I understand the decentralized, decentralized version for it because you can obviously hook up your MetaMask and use it. It's lovely, right? That's fine. But the fundamentals are you're paying way more to use Uniswap because you're on the chain versus the likes of Binance, versus the likes of Qcoin, whatever. So for me, yeah, you can you can save a lot of hassle, but for me, why not just go onto Qcoin and then withdraw it into your ERC20 token wallet and happy days. Whereas on Uniswap, you're doing so many fees for no reason. You know, it's, it's a piece of poo really in that way. Which coin will make you rich? Dogecoin, have you not heard? <laughs> Apparently. Bought on Feta, Feta the cheese, as Andy would say, Feta. I like Vita. I'm, I'm a bit gutted I missed out. I did a video on this in 2019 when it was like 11 cents or something like that. I know even 11 cents, to be fair. It was probably less than that. Because um, I'm a bit of a geek. I like gaming. I like what they were doing. I always bought into the idea of this. No, this thing is just... I freaking love it. But, you know, I totally slept on it. Oopsie. Just one of those things. It just Some things just knock you by. And then I bought my bags and thought, oh, you know, fuck. I already mooned, didn't it? Just one of those things it happens you can't buy them all but if you're into content creation if you're into gaming if you're into streaming if you're into just overall networks for me beta definitely should be a one you should be using and looking at and i would like to get my videos on here but it doesn't really work in the same way as youtube which is kind of a bummer Ugh, annoying but yeah there's loads of things out there can you explain the different wallets so you get a cold wallet, which is a ledger, it is an exodus, it is where you hold the private keys and they're offline. A hot wallet is an exchange wallet, so they are hot, they are live on the internet, they can be hacked. So if you have anything on Binance, Coinbase, Qcoin, any exchange, it's hot. If it's on your computer or if it's away from your, well, not even on your computer, essentially, if it's on your own encrypted private keys, which essentially a ledger is just encrypted private keys, 
it's safe. Simple as that. Well, it's safe until you give someone your code. Um, I've not checked out Hopium or Opium. I've no idea. I've never heard of it before, so I'll look at that at some point. I'll make a note of it. Do you think Azilica will pump after the Ethereum bridge goes live? I think so, yes. The reason why I say this is because it has so much relationship ties with Binance. And with the Binance stable currency and with the you know the the Singapore dollar as well on there, there's a lot of interest anyways in the blockchain space. When you think people are frustrated with fees and the, the dynamic of the fee cost and the fee base of the gas fees due to the price and the, the volatility of Ethereum people will look at alternative methods to basically put their tokens through. And when you start thinking that, that Binance, you know, the Binance stable currency on there anyways, people are going to just filter it through and it's going to use that network. So we may well see on Binance essentially options to use Zilliqa network. So like what you see with ERC20 tokens, you see USD, you see Tron, you see all these other networks, you may well see Zilliqa on there at some point using the BUSD framework, which would be good. So token flow into that how many tokens are, are, are transferred over binance quite a lot and that stable currency is using the zillica network anyways it's going to just it's going to be good in my opinion and obviously you got zill swap as well multiple erc20 tokens can go on there safely and be used and transferred as a token flow so that's good you know there's ultimate ways of doing it but if it's going to create a dynamic of a little bit of a spillover into the zillica network which will increase the burning rate which will increase the tokenomics it's going to be good so you've got, to be, you've got to be very, very careful in terms of ERC20 tokens and what you use because it gets very, very expensive. But being able to be talking to each other in terms of interoperability, i.e. Zilliqa to Ethereum, it's a big thing. What's your take on BitShares? <laughs> thought it was dead years ago. That was around when I first joined the market back in the day. BitShares. Oh my God, it hasn't even changed the logo. Yeah, this is like... I know people are only asking me this because it's literally pumping. Uh, yeah, I've never really, never really had any sort of relationship with it. This was like one of the first coins out, out back in the day. Well, it wasn't, it was 2014, but you know the picture. You know, it's one of the old school ones, but you can see it's uh, got a bit of history with a bit of P&Ds. But yeah, really. My courses are only following videos. However, there may be changes to that in the future. Maybe. I've not made any money in the last uh, 24 hours trading. My investments have gone up massively, don't get me wrong, but I've not been jumping on anything. How much leverage do you think is safe in top coins? I only use 3x if I do it. For me, you know, leverage is all about how to use it and not 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 what you see on Twitter in terms of people going 100x, you always got to try and use... It's it's a balancing act with, with leverage. You you want to use as little capital at risk, but you also want to get a little bit of an advantage as well and not make it too overstretched. It's just one of those things. It just happens. But some people always, always get sidetracked with FOMO and they start buying things when they shouldn't be buying. They buy the dips in altcoin markets and use high leverage and get completely wrecked. When you think about it, Dogecoin is on the futures markets. You know, can you imagine using like a 25x and it's moving so volatile and it moves the wrong way against you? Yeah, you're going to lose all your money very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. Um, Elrond. Someone just mentioned Elrond. What do I think of it? Never really fully massively looked into it. I understand there's a bit of competition between this and Zilliqa. I also understand my email inbox as well because they did email me a few months back, which is quite funny. Um, before the token swap, they were looking to generate hype around the token swap. And I think that was one thing that's kind of stood out in my brain with this is a little bit of like cheekiness. So I don't really... I don't really follow it that much because I kind of disregarded it with, with the way that they, they did the token swap. They change the dynamic of how many tokens they've got and then email influencers to kind of push it. So, I don't know. You know, for me, I've heard the technology is good. I've heard it's very, very fast. I've heard it's very, very relatable with what we're trying to build on Ethereum and stuff like that. But I just don't like that. I don't like it when coins go to influencers. It Honestly, it annoys me. I, I see it all the time. And I've, if, if you're in my VIP groups, you see me all the time putting emails in there from, you know, companies, 
all the time. I do it all the time because it really annoys me. I've seen big YouTubers pushing the same coins. And I also see people who email me and mention these YouTubers by name. Oh, by the way, we've had X YouTuber, this YouTuber, this Twitter person promote us in the last few weeks. Do you fancy doing it too? Like, no, I don't. <laughs> no, thank you. I don't have any interest in that. And that's the thing. I mentioned it all the time with YouTubers promoting projects. It happens. We can't get away from it. So if you see a YouTuber or even in myself, like a coin that you've never, ever, 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 ever heard of ever, and it came out of the blue and it's currently their number one coin for the year. It's like, what? where's that come from? So just be careful. And they do it every week. That gets weird as well. But ultimately, influence is going to really hurt people whether it's elon musk whether it's like the ksi or people like that big influences with a lot of followers getting people to buy on that green mentality we're going to see a lot of people lose money and influencer marketing is also one of them as well i've never heard of arrowware if even if i've said that right in terms of the comments but yeah you've got to be careful with all these kind of influences honestly you do and just be careful with just everything honestly because I know it's bullish at the minute. I know people are excited, but I've been in bear markets where people have lost their entire wealth in a matter of three or four weeks. Because even if you're looking at the likes of Dogecoin right now, and just to point this out as well, just to let you know, you know what I mean, this is massively. Right now, people might be panicking. If people bought in the night at like 240 sats, they've lost 41% of their BTC. So if they had one Bitcoin, They've only got 0 0.6 left. That's a lot of money to lose in a in a trade with or without leverage. There might not have, there might have been leverage in, involved in this as well when you look at the overall riding picture. That's a problem. That's a very, very big problem. And, you know, people will then run scared of the market. They won't come back. Oh, cryptocurrency is a scam. <laughs> All those people. You know which ones. Which coins do you think will move out of the top 20 and could enter in the coming months fucking hell i don't know um i've already said i think xrp will move out of the top 10 in at the end of the year i just i, I see that pff, it's not growing is it let's be honest i mean it's wow when you think about it stella is wow wow like half you know if if stella just doubles in price it's going to jump it and i i don't see the I don't know. It depends on the lawsuit, obviously, but I've always I've always maintained that. I also think the same for Chainlink. I think that Chainlink will probably as well. I think other coins will grow faster than the likes of Chainlink and, and XRP. I think other coins will just jump in. It's just one of those things. I think the likes of Ave will probably jump in. You know, you could probably argue the likes of Feta could potentially jump in. NSX, uh, SNX even could even jump in potentially. You just don't know where things are going to go. And when you got to think. It, it's not a bad thing not being in the top 10 or whatever, but it just means that other coins will probably have a bigger jolt. Look at Dogecoin. It was like rank 100 like three, four days ago. It's now an 11. <laughs> you know, you just don't know where things are going to go. And sometimes coins will be stable and steady and some coins will just be explosive as hell. Just one of those things is crazy. Uh, what else have we got question wise? Top three coins that I think are quite stable for the long term. Polkadot, RSR, and Zilliqa, in my opinion. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not RSR. RSR is probably going to be quite volatile, I think, in the future. be quite fun, I think, as well. Thoughts on HBAR? Very, very decent. Very, very decent. Big partnerships. Very, very centralized, though. But, yeah, um, I do think the DeFi space will probably clam a little bit further towards that top 10 top 20 levels like the likes of ave you know there's like compound as well maker you know all these all these kind of lock up situations where you're going to think well what could happen i see these growing more in value if ethereum pops and blows and moons essentially all these DeFi world coins are going to just go with it essentially again and it's going to increase that lock up it's going to increase that utility use and it's going to get very very interesting um can you check how much that is total mark as a rose rose quite a bit in the last 24 hours to be fair so if we're even if we're looking at say the last few weeks 
I even let's just look at this to be fair. So in the last what 24 hours, even well not even that, from essentially midnight, we dumped a little bit and then we've just shot. So we've already gained a massive chunk since eight o'clock this morning in you know UK ish time. So growing a hundred billion essentially. That's crazy. Um, is it? Yeah. Crazy. When you think about it. That's a lot of money. Um, Dogecoin will pump into other orts. Yes, I think we'll go into Bitcoin. I think that's already happening. I think we're already seeing it. I think we're seeing the BTC pump is people taking profits from that that drop off, and I think the BTC profits will then fly into the likes of Ethereum, Polkadot, other coins that are doing quite well overall in the market. But I do think people will get completely wrecked because I think people, especially new people who don't understand the dynamic of a low value altcoin it doesn't mean that it's undervalued it just means that it's got more supply and they just look at it and think well hey it's worth two cents if that goes to a dollar i've became rich where realistically they've got so many coins it's like no it doesn't work out that way xrp was a victim of it last time in the last bull run so if you're new to the space and you didn't know this xrp pumped from like 25 cents to about three dollars thirty in a matter of about six weeks, it was stupidly fast, right? And it was ridiculous. And what what that dynamic was was essentially Bitcoin's expensive. I don't want to buy. It. I want to buy that. I want to buy loads of this. And it just pumped. It went crazy. But the thing with XRP is, yes, there's a lot of tokens, but there's nowhere near as many as Dogecoin. But XRP doesn't belt feed coins out. It's deinflationary. It burns fees essentially, even though there's a huge supply. But with Dogecoin, it's the opposite. It would always generate coins. It, it's already generated a billion in the last 24 hours. So that's kind of a problem. And if you think about it that way, well, it's never going to, it's always going to be diluted. So it's quite kind of interesting. But when you start looking at them, the dynamic of people's mindset, oh, it looks cheap on to buy that. And then people follow it and people go for it. I've already said a little bit of influence will just go a long way. And you've already started to see it. When you start looking at the last seven days here, in USD prices, a lot of coins have went mad. Phantom's gone mad. Obviously, Swissbox and Voyager payment systems to allow you to get into the market have gone mental because people want to buy in. Likes of Uniswap's doing crazy. Even though Uniswap has no real use case other than governance, people are using Uniswap massively. It's all a chain reaction. It's always going to happen. The likes of Sushi Swap's doing well as well. Obviously, an alternative to Uniswap. So it's it's one of those things it's just you cannot control volume you cannot control people and i'm already looking at dogecoin just dropping but look up to the lower time frame as you can see here what's happened here is we've had a pullback an aggressive pullback so if we're looking at overall simple statistics here we've had quite an aggressive pullback down to this well if i can get that roughly level just below the 618 we popped off, but what adds, what could have actually happened here, we could have made it even worse by saying it's a rejection of the 50% level and we could be actually going down. We could be going right back down to 51 sats again. And if that happens, I'm just gonna laugh at all the people on my YouTube because I'm serious, people were betting one BTC that this was gonna to go to a dollar. I can't see it. I cannot see this going to a dollar. If this was to go to a dollar, I've already said it's gonna it's gonna basically be rivaling Ethereum. I can't see it happen, but yeah. Yeah, people are buying basically crap and not over solid projects, which is kind of the problem. And that's where the FOMO and the greed mentality comes in. You know, everyone's got this greed mentality. If something's doing well, they want to buy it. It's like, like Voyager, for example, right now. People want to buy Voyager because it's pumping like crazy. Whereas realistically, the time to buy was when no one was talking about it. Look at the fundamentals, buy sit in it like myself and others and then watch as everyone fights over it it's just quite funny which is why we always say i love it when people pump our bags because ultimately it happens do you think zilla can enter the top 10 i don't know if it'll enter the top 10 but i do think it being a top 20 coin in my opinion given the size of the blockchain given the sharding elements of it the ethereum bridge and the interoperability with other blockchains as well is kind of key there's a lot of things that Zilliqa haven't done yet. They've not got mainstream adoption in America yet. They're only mainly prominent in Asia. 
there's a lot of the blockchain not live yet. So there's a lot of things to go on and they're ultimately looking to fund a lot of projects as well, which is always good. So yeah, it'll be a smaller chain. It'll be probably an Asian led chain, but what's to stop it being up there with the, in the top five blockchains? Potentially it could be. Could you see it in the likes of Ethereum, Polkadot, Cardano? You know, potentially, yeah. Could it's 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 a, it's essentially a generation three and a layer one solution blockchain, which is kind of what you want. You don't want these shitty. Let's be honest, you don't want a blockchain generation one to be leading the way of smart contracts, which is what Ethereum is right now. It doesn't work. It's not scalable. Very very bloaty, essentially. Uh, what else have we got question wise bull trap yep i think bitcoin is going to turn at some point i think i mentioned this on twitter if you've if you've been keeping an eye on my twitter i did a I did a chat well today this is what i've got as a chat i've got this as an area of distribution essentially i think we're going to turn around at this point we may go a little bit higher but essentially what we need to do we need to break above 40 40,000 or 41,000 essentially give or take around this level to break the structure but what I've said as an entry point is wait for a, a situation where this actually level this level holds so basically 32k if this holds and we form a higher low we may well see a continuation going up to retest that level but until that happens we can't really say this could turn around and I've already said it a few times if you start putting a fib on this and look at where it's kind of stopped and turn around and we make another low and then we form a lower low it's going to go down to 25k potentially which or 27k at least you know so in a way i kind of want that because that'll bring the dominance down that'd be fun and then altcoins can go mental for a bit but it depends on the it depends on the spillover you know bitcoin will never pump forever it, it always has breaks and it always chills out and we're seeing that break cycle now but what we're starting to see actually is a formation of a downtrend attack starting a bit we've had a bit of a pump and i think personally this is dogecoin profits just pumping it and elon musk and people like that making a bit of banter will all coins follow if btc comes back yep in usd prices it always does in btc prices it'll probably go the other way potentially anyways goodness me i've been on for an hour an hour in 10 minutes man guys also Slap the like button. There's over 600 people in here, only 370 likes. Come on, you can do better than that. I had over a thousand last time. What are we talking about here, question wise? Randomness. CRV, never really looked at it to be fair. You have the best hat and ass spot on. Thank you. I've got five hats. Funny enough. I don't even know why I wear it. People think I'm bold. It's great. Genuinely, people think I'm bold. I put um, my business partner put a, a a photo of me on Instagram, on Twitter, and stuff. And people are like, he's got hair. Yeah, I got hair. Phantom pumping like crazy. I wouldn't buy it just yet. I'd wait for it to pull back. I've looked at Reef. I've not had a big look at Reef. I need to look into it. Um, I will get onto it though. Dot or Cardano? Dot for me. Dot is. I love dot. I think it's brilliant. If you if you don't if you bored one day, go on the polka dot YouTube channel and watch the videos. You'll fall down a rabbit hole and understand how substrate works, how the parachains work. So, oh my god, that's amazing. Love it. The right time to enter Zill from ETH. Potentially, yes, it'll be low value because it's not growing as much. Well, crypto. We're growing the crypto market cap and more regulations. Yes, regulations need to happen, I think. I think there needs to be some sort of like rule structure framework for certain regulations. That doesn't mean like go mental, but I do think there's certain things that need to be stopped, and we all know that. We all know that the ICOs and the auditing of Teva is a bit dodgy, right? We need to, I think we need some sort of framework for that to make token raises more legal and ethical for like basically to stop investors and not so much investors but corporate giants and advisors who don't do anything get paid right there's a lot of manipulation in money laundering in that way not not that i ever say that of course and there's also elements we've obviously tether we know that we're auditing so i think as a simple rule if we all stick to the same sheet 
everything will be all right. I don't think it'll be that drastic, but I just think there should be some framework for like how people make a lot of money very, very quickly. And it's always coming from influence. Like anyone can belt feed tokens out. It's a bit weird that. There should be some sort of president to stop that on an ICO, for example. Now, we all know how people made money. Look at Tron as an example. They've been in some dodgy buyouts very, very recently. It all came out in the wash as well with how they took over BitTorrent and how they've done this with Poloniex. How much money has been made? Well, we don't know. It's kind of evaporated. It's like, where the fuck's that gone? That's the sort of thing I'm looking for, but we'll see. Any thoughts on the SEC lawsuit? Um, there's already been 11 lawsuits against other currencies in the US, essentially. I think it's 11 or maybe more than that. Um, this is just another one that goes with it, obviously. But I do feel that it will get thrown out. I think, I think they won't bother with it. I think it'll cost too much money to do it. And I also think that XRP will probably show exactly what they were doing, so it's fine. They've already had clarification that it's all right in other countries. So worst case scenario, They'll just fuck off to Asia or something like that, in my opinion. Uh, do, 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 do. Dot or QNT, dot 110%. Do I think Pluton will pump? Yes, with mass adoption, with use case. What do I think of Tezos? It's okay. The staking model is pretty decent, but for me, it's not really one that I want to hold. I think there's others out there that are better, for my opinion. Where to set buy order for HBAR? I have no idea. I'm not looking. Do it yourself. Simple. <laughs> but yeah, there's so many questions. Obviously, I can't just keep up with this. I know people want to look at one inch, obviously. Um, one of those things. Again, I don't really understand it. I've never really looked at it. I don't want to give advice on one inch other than the fact that I've heard of it on Twitter. I've heard of it all over this channel. But yeah, I need to do a proper di deep dive and a dig. I'm kind of just more focusing on what I've got right now. Everything's bumping hard right now, I think. Most things are, anyways. Look at the state of this, though. That's just crazy. Anyways, I'm going to love you and leave you. Before you leave, obviously, slap the like button as hard as you can. Let people know about it. For me, I'll be back on Sunday. Sunday evening, we'll do a market analysis. What to look for. <laughs> we may well have a huge spillover in the market of what's gone wrong. And yeah. Life will be good. We'll see what happens. But as, as I always say, though, please just buy low. Be calm, cool, collective. And always secure the bag. If you've had a coin that's like Voyager, for example, it's an 100x, 100x, sorry, 100% in a matter of very, very quickly, start considering taking a little bit out because things can get very, very interesting. So, yeah, see you again on Sunday. We'll have a laugh and we'll have a joke. And I might wear a different hat. We'll see.